Personal story segment tonight, Reverend Franklin Graham, not a big supporter of President Obama. And on Easter Sunday, he was asked about the birth certificate deal. He can solve this whole birth certificate issue pretty quickly. Um, I, I don't know. I was born in a hospital in Asheville, North Carolina, and I know that um, my records are there. You can probably even go and find out what room my mother was in when I was born. I, I don't know why he can't produce that. Here now is Reverend Graham. First of all, what, President Obama, do you respect him? Uh, I like the man. He's a very nice man. And yes, I would say I'll respect him. I, I disagree, Bill, with a lot of uh, the policies and the direction that he's taken our country. But do you disagree? He's a nice guy. Do you disagree as a preacher or as a citizen? No, I disagree as a citizen. Okay, so it doesn't really have anything to do with your theological beliefs. No, no. Right, because as you know, your father, perhaps the most famous. Uh, preacher in, in the United States history, he kind of didn't get involved with politics too much, but you, you get involved a little bit more. Well, no, he did get involved in politics. You have to remember, you know, he goes back 60 years of ministry. Right. And he has known every president. But uh, he was friends with guys like Johnson and Nixon. Sure. You know, both sides of the and aisle. And Kennedy and Eisenhower. Right. So, uh, but he was friends with them, and he did get involved in politics to a degree. But wouldn't you say you were much, uh, not much more, but more inclined to get into politics. No, I, I don't I don't want to get involved in politics, but I, I get asked questions, just like you you ask me questions now. I try to answer those questions, but I don't go out and campaign. I don't no, go out you and don't make do speeches. That. I don't make speeches. Right. Uh, but you make it clear that you're not a big fan of Barack Obama. You're gonna be no, voting for him next time around. I'm I'm not a fan of the policies that the Democrats and the Republicans alike have got us into. We are in a mess bill and it's it's not Barack Obama that got us into it. It's the Republicans and Democrats over decades. Yeah, the of spending grief. And, 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 and the debt. Is there anything else that, uh, that the government now and perhaps the government over the last few decades has done to the country that you object to? Wars, for example, things like that? I, I, th I think the, the spending that our country is, uh, we're we are addicted to spending. And it's, it's just, in, it's infiltrated the entire government. What about we've, got the, get, uh, we've got to get out of it, Bill. What about Jesus' philosophy that you have to, you're, have to help the poor, you're compelled to help the Absolutely, poor? Absolutely, Bill. I believe in, in helping the poor, and that's what I've dedicated my life to. That's what Samaritan's Purse is all about. And we work, you saw those tornadoes, we're, we're there. You're already down there, I know yes, that. Yes, sir, we're right? down there. And it, but should the government force Americans, because a lot of the spending has been entitlement spending, you know that. Well, uh, I think we help the poor, but I think a lot of the, the spending is more than just helping the poor. Okay. Now, we had a discussion earlier about the Time Magazine cover last week where a preacher in Michigan yeah. who wrote a book says there's, there's really no hell, that God is not a monster. He wouldn't assign any human being to eternal damnation. How do you answer that? Well, first of all, I believe the, the man uh, is a false teacher. I believe he's a, a heretic because the Bible is very clear that there is a hell. And if you, if you look at uh, Revelation chapter 20, uh, it not only is a person uh, condemned to hell, they are thrown into hell, Bill. That, that's how serious But isn't this that is. a cruel action? A cruel action. It, what, what's cruel is a person that uh, rejects Almighty God and, and slams the door in God's face. The Bible says that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shouldn't perish but have everlasting life. Jesus Christ came to this earth to take our sins, your sin, Bill, mine, and He went to the cross and He took our sin. The, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Uh, he took the, the penalty of death for you and for me and for all of mankind. And he was buried for our sins. But on the third day, God raised his son to life. Jesus Christ is alive. Now what, and if you accept it, uh, you have eternal people, life. What about people who don't know the Bible? See, some evangelicals say that you can't get to heaven mm -hmm. uh, unless you are born again through Jesus Christ. But there, throughout history have been people who have never even heard of Jesus Christ. And, and that has been an argument, Bill, from, right. from day one. And it's very clear what the Bible teaches. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. But when we know that when people get before the great white throne judgment in Revelation chapter 20, that uh, God has made himself known to all of humanity, whether it's through nature, watching the sun come up in the morning. There's not a person out there that doesn't ask at some point, right, is so there God? Are you saying that if somebody believes in the goodness of the Creator, they can be saved. Nobody will have an excuse when they stand before God. I believe if a person is, is sincerely seeking Almighty God, that He will reveal His Son Jesus Christ to them. In some way. Them. In okay. some way. He'll reveal His Son Jesus but, Christ but, to let, them. Let me give you a really stark example. You know, there are uh, millions killed in the Holocaust, Jewish people, sure. who don't accept Jesus Christ as God. But they were good people, good innocent people, yeah. children, massacred. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine that they're not in heaven. 
No. Bill, uh, all I can tell you is what this book right here, the Bible. No, no, no. You've got to bring some something. logic to this with no, all due respect. No, you, you, you have to have faith, Bill. I do have faith. I have faith in a just God. I believe in a just and God. And he is a just God. Right. And he's going to judge sin. And he's going to judge all but sinners. But if innocent people were killed without being revealed yes. or didn't know about Jesus or didn't believe in him because of their parents mm -hmm. or something else, I can't imagine that they're damned. I can't imagine. Bill, I'm, I'm, not the, I'm, not, I'm not the judge. God is the judge. Right. But when we stand before him on that, for, for, forget the children in the Holocaust. I'm they just, can't I'm, forget them. No, right. but, no, but I'm just saying for right now for this argument, yourself, for those that are watching, what have we done with Jesus Christ? Free will have, is a, it's have ever, it's all about him? free will. Have I we agree rejected with you. him? Are I we ready to stand 100%. before, before yeah. the throne? I, uh, you know, I just want to clarify. I I'm 100% with you. God gives every human being free will. Mm -hmm. We can choose what we do. Yes, sir. And we will be held accountable. Absolutely. I absolutely believe that for what we choose. Mm -hmm. I believe it. Yeah. Reverend, very interesting. Thanks for coming and taking the time. All right. Thank you, Best Reverend. to your dad, 92 years old. He's doing okay? 92 and a half. 92 and a half. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Reverend. Thank Good you. to see you.